Well, not quite in the flesh, down the Zoom lens. How exactly. fashionable. <laughs> so, listen, how's Jeff? Oh, God, why does everybody want to know how Jeff is? What about me? <laughs> Jeff has just got in. Jeff has, because um, you know he does at other people's houses. Yeah. And he also sells 20, 20th Century Prints. That's his Instagram thing. So I'll give him a plug for that. It's called 20th Century Prints. Wow. And he's selling, it's mid 20th century stuff. He's got some good names, Hugh. He's got yeah. some really lovely stuff. It's worth a gander, it really is. I'm going to take a note of that. I'll, I'll have a look at that, definitely. Yeah. Oh, bless <laughs> you. Bless you, yeah. darling. Yeah. Um, so he's very well indeed. Um, so it's the first time he's visited a client's house in two months. Yeah. And I told him he had to wear his gloves, he had to wear his mask. Oh, oh, yeah. um, and so I think we're all, anyway, you know, what can you do? We've got to start inching our way back to yes. normality. Uh, well, we're just, we're not even out of uh, full lockdown yet. Not till next week. No, well, you, I think that what happened, obviously, because this being London, it kind of hit us. Yeah. And then it moved up the country, because my mother is in Lytham St Anne's, which is just outside of Blackpool. And literally, even in March, she was going, oh, well, it won't come here. It won't come here. I thought, yes, it will. It will. <laughs> and then it did, you know. So, um, but anyway, so it's obviously much colder where you are, because you're wearing a jumper. <laughs> Yes, today it is. Uh, and I, I was out and about uh, just tidying things up because things are blowing all over the place because it's so windy. And that's why the sweater's on. I, I'm, I'll probably take it off shortly. Okay. Um, in, fact, in fact, I'll take it off now. Okay. Um, and then when you've taken your jumper off, I want you to tell me where you are and what I can see in the background and if, whether that's a finished piece or a piece you're working on. Uh, the piece on the easel is a piece I'm working on. I've got three pieces that I'm working on uh, that I'm, uh, are of a response to the landscapes up here because the mountainscapes are quite very dramatic up here. Yeah. And uh, the plan was to actually build three big paintings. They are four feet by three feet, yeah. each one of them. They're all the same size. And uh, I'm hoping, once this is over, that I'll find a gallery that will hang them all together alongside etchings that I've done of the, of the same subject. Okay, um, now, before you go any further, I want etchings explained to me properly. And um, I want you to tell me, if this is going to be a series, how do they differ? Is it slightly further down the coast or is it at different times of day, same scene? No, no, it could be that uh, some of them are exactly the same scene, yeah. but because of the technique of etching, the whole uh, image changes uh, because you're cutting into a metal plate and then you're, cut, you're burning that with acid and the ink goes into the grooves. You clean the plate and then the plate goes through a press. If you're not familiar with Norman Aykroyd's work, he does some beautiful uh, etchings. No, I mean, the whole thing about etchings, I've, I've never tried it, I've never, yeah. I mean, it's quite complicated, isn't it? Have you got the press and everything in your studio? No, I go to, uh, there's a printmaker's workshop in Glasgow, and there's a printmaker's workshop in Inverness. And to be honest, this village, I love that where I live, but you have to get out of it because it, it is very remote, it's very isolated, and particularly at the moment. And of course, I can't get to either Glasgow or Inverness at the moment, so I'm really missing that because it's mixing and socialising with other artists is great. And yeah. just picking up new skills, you know? But so, you, I think you, you would enjoy it. Mm, I think it's quite technical, and I don't, you know me, I'm quite slapdash. Yeah. And I, I struggle with, I did um, a, a couple of, just before we went into lockdown, my daughter for Christmas bought me um, a Japanese woodblock printing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, there's a place uh, in Southwark, uh, a, quite a scruffy studio space, but they do good courses. And I found that very, um, it, lots of rules, because you know the Japanese, they're, they're yeah. just they're absolutely everything's got to be done exactly as tradition dictates and I did find it I mean I enjoyed it and I got quite a nice print out of it but it took three weeks to get a, a one image yeah and for me that's that's quite painstaking yeah yeah well it is I I, I find you know you you saying about being a bit slapped I'm slapdash as well I mean I, I know I am 
and I, I enjoy cutting the, the plate and that process. And once you get hold of that process, it's, it's enjoyable. Um, of course, it comes out in reverse. because of, Yeah, that's the freaky bit as well. Do you try and work in reverse? Yeah. Or do, do you, oh, really? I use a mirror sometimes. Oh, God. Because the mirror image can let you see what your finished print uh, is. Um, uh, that's, I think that's too complicated for me, Hugh. I really yeah. do. Yeah. <laughs> I do like the idea, though, of having a three foot by four foot canvas. Yeah. Like you have, and is that, I'm presuming that's oils you're working in? No, it's acrylic. Oh, nice. I've actually virtually stopped using oil because, uh, well, I love oils, but it's, it's the things like uh, turpentine and the different things you're mixing with. And to be honest, this is, it looks like a studio. This is my lounge. Right. And I, I, what I do is I clear the furniture out of the way and I can open it up as a painting area and I've got plastic on the floor. But yeah. uh, of course, oil paint, if I get it on the furniture, it's a nightmare. Yeah. They're acrylic uh, uh, because you're, you're binding it with water. And high quality the, uh, acrylics nowadays, they're expensive, but you would, I, I would challenge anybody to be able to say, is that acrylic or is it oil paint? It's difficult to tell. And I, well, I've, I've done a... I mean, ever since I did Flavours, I mean, I, the first one I did was with you in, was it Italy? Treviso, yes, remember, I was saying Yes, Paris. yes, yeah. yes. Um, in that farmhouse. Yes. Uh, we had, some of the people were doing the cooking and we were doing the painting. Um, and you see, ever since then, I, I've been very art course hungry. And the best have been, you know, the ones abroad with Flavours. I did it, I did, um, I did a couple in Italy, one in Sicily, and then, oh God, there was a mad one. I don't know whether you've ever been to it, Hugh. It was, um, it was a Flavours holiday in November in Morocco. I was there last month in November. Isn't it it's stunning? It's absolutely insane. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh my God. I loved it, actually. Yeah. I mean, I... I still at night when I can't sleep and I need something to think about and you know when you have you need a f I hate to use the word fantasy because that always sounds like it's going to be something really rude <laughs> um, but just just something that takes you away from uh, everything else and that accommodation in Morocco I if somebody had said to me well this belongs to Elton John I'd have said well yes of course it does Apart from the fact it was a bit a bit subtle for Alton John, it was so luxurious and so beautiful, and the gardens and the pool. Yeah, I mean, I know. I I mean, I thought, and it was it not actually classed as a, a holiday home? And I'm saying, really, um, this is a holiday home. God I knows mean, what home is like. There was nothing, <laughs> nothing to suggest your usual sort of slightly threadbare, chipped mug holiday home. Because, I mean, my sister has a holiday. <laughs> <laughs> it's in Wales, bloody hell, it's always raining. And everything is, you know, every towel she has in that place belonged to my grandmother. And, you know, every bit of bed linen is sort of from the 1970s. But, no, that Moroccan one, if I, I mean, it's very fortunate to be a guest, but if I had, you know, if, if everything comes good again, um, that would be the ultimate. It's the ultimate treat one, isn't it? I mean, there's some lovely destinations with flavours, but yes. that really <laughs> did. And I agree with you. I mean, I... I, I... I've got one of the great things about living here. I mean, it has ups and downs to it, but one of the things is the medical service we get here. And uh, my doctor, will, when I go on my way, when I get home, there's always a message, either a written message or on the phone, Hugh, you must come along and get your blood pressure checked. Mm -hmm. And any time I go along there, she'll say, you must go to your happy place before I take it. And that's one of the happy places because yeah. it really is. It's such so a beautiful place. I have, I have high blood pressure as well um, because I'm a natural hysteric, obviously, and I'm a heavy drinking, overweight, middle-aged woman. So what can I do? <laughs> um, so uh, I, yes, I, they always tell, I always have to have my blood pressure done about three times. And normally <laughs> in the end, I'm lying down on the floor for, for 10 minutes. But I mean, one of the reasons why I do so much painting at the moment, well, uh, uh, in, during lockdown, I've been doing a piece a day, is uh, for therapy. I mean, art for me, I'll never be somebody who can <laughs> charge 
money for anything I do. But um, it's been, it's, it, for me, it's, it's a blood pressure lowerer. Yeah. I mean, and I obviously haven't got a studio, but like most people, I've got a kitchen table. Yeah. And I, um, because, because of lockdown and nobody coming to the house, and it just being Jeff and I, I've been able to leave all my toys out because we're complete slobs. We don't eat at the kitchen table. You know, <laughs> we, we eat on our knees in front of the television. You know. So I've got everything out. And what my thing at the moment, what I'm using a lot of, uh, because I'm lazy and I like the very instant effect of it, uh, uh, oil pastel crayons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I, black I, I... paper. Oh, wow. And you know, one of the things I've done with them, which is worth trying a little bit, is if you get a little bit of um, either uh, white spirit or even yeah. turpentine, but white spirit's fine. Yeah. And if you just gently, you can actually drag over it and it will make the, uh, the oil pastel release. And you'll so, get like sometimes it's quite grainy you know if you because if you're doing like white on black and yeah. you know it, 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 if you do it over and over it just becomes very thick and claggy yeah. so if i've got yeah. a bit of turps or whatever yeah. i just thinned it out and then it becomes like a i suppose a bit like a very thin oil it paper. does like a wash like a little okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. well that's something i will attempt yeah. this yeah. weekend yeah yeah how does it feel to be 60 um, well, thank you very much. <laughs> Congratulations, yeah. I find myself sort of sitting further and further back and just looking better and better at a distance, you know. I mean, I, I, close up is not my friend anymore, but um, 60 is, do you know what I think that 60, um, at this moment, uh, in, a, in a pandemic, it's not a bad age to be, yeah. because I, I think that it's very, very hard for young people and I, I'm very grateful that my daughter is, um, she's 31 now. I mean, I'm not glad that she's a playwright, God in heaven, we haven't got this, you know, we are a family of freelancers. It's, you know, it's a horrific time, but she's a very clever playwright and I feel desperately sorry for her because in November she won this prize she won it's Europe's biggest playwriting prize it's called the Bruntwood Prize uh, for playwriting it's only held every two years it's massive and there are sort of always about 3,000 entries but they're and they've got to be sort of quality people you know who yeah. and she she won this and um, it's a big, quite big prize money and uh, the Manchester Royal Exchange was going to put the piece on early next year and that's of course now in huge jeopardy she had a children's uh, play going up to the Edinburgh Festival with Payne's Plough, um, all sorts of things, you know, and it's just, it's heartbreaking. And the only comfort is that everybody is in the same boat. You know, there isn't anybody that's, that is able to do theatre at the moment. Everybody has been completely knocked off the chessboard. It's, yeah. And I think when you're 60, at least I've had, I've had so much um fun really in terms of my career and traveling and and sort of i've been to australia i've been to finland know, yeah yeah you know, it's it's kind of if, if nothing ever happened for me performance wise again i could hack it i mean i'd be livid and i'd go a bit mad but i have had an a, a great career yeah and that, do you feel like that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, the thing is, I, I, I st continue to look forward as well and hope that, I, I, that the inspiration will still come and I will be the, the international great artist that I think I, is locked inside. I just can't get them out, you know? Oh, well, listen, I mean, it's, all, it's inside all of us. <laughs> even I, Hugh, even I. <laughs> <laughs> but did you manage to get a party to, to celebrate your, your birthday? Uh, no, I, I, I was... I was a bit weird about this one anyway. Um, initially, I wanted to go to Japan. And thank God I didn't, because I'd probably spent a fortune and not got my money back. Yeah. So it, got, it came down to we were going to go to Stockholm, uh, me, Jeff, and Phoebe. And um, my birthday was on the 16th of March. Yeah. And you could feel, especially in London, from the beginning of March, I mean, I was wearing gloves uh, from February, early February. 
I was wearing surgical gloves because I live very near King's College Hospital. Yeah. And I knew that if there was going to be cases of corona in London, they would be at King's. And all the nurses and all the staff used the same train station. So I was very cautious quite early on. And um, the weekend before my 60th birthday, I was up in the Lake District doing a book festival uh, because I've been, I've been writing novels on the side. Yeah, yeah I know. I, know. And, um, I was doing a book festival for inheritance uh, at the Lake, in the Lake District. And I was the last author that came out of London. And they actually had to close the festival early. I was actually the last person, all the other guests that were meant to do the next couple of days bailed out because all of a sudden there was very much a feeling in London that this was dangerous. Wow. So I went up to the Lake District and very oddly, and I was being interviewed by um, uh, somebody who actually lived in Devon and she left the Lake District the same day as I did and by the time she got to Devon she had the coronavirus. Oh wow. Now I don't know how I didn't get it because we were sitting this far apart. And if she'd, she had it that weekend, I just, I don't understand. But maybe she picked it up on the way home. Maybe she went to a petrol station. Maybe she touched it. Who knows? It's that kind of thing that's... Yeah. So I got back to London. A couple of days later, on the 16th, it was my birthday. We went to... It, London was closing down. You could feel it. Yeah, you could yeah. just feel it. Doors were shutting. Windows were coming down. And we went to the Picasso on Paper exhibition at the oh, Royal Academy. Yeah. yeah. And it closed the next day. Yeah. And it was, it was such a great exhibition. It's, it's actually available online. You could snoop around yeah. it. Yeah. And, uh, but it was just, and it was quite empty and it felt very safe. And but there, were a lot of, there were a lot of Asians in masks. I mean, any tourists that were left over were wearing masks by this stage. And uh, we had lunch out, and there was a there was an Italian couple that came in with their child, right, to this restaurant, this rather posh restaurant around the back of um, Royal Academy. And this child came in; it was coughing. <coughs> and this re huge restaurant, quite empty, and they chose the table next next to us, not two meters, you know, right next to us. And she saw my face. And she said, it's not Corona. And I said, well, good, I'm glad, because you're sitting very close. And she said, you want us to move? And I said, you know, I'd be really relieved if you did. And her husband wouldn't let them move. So there's this massive restaurant and there's, you know, three tables and there's us and that <coughs> coughing child. So, and then, we, you know, we came home, we had supper with my sister, and my nephew and a few, you know, uh, a little gang of us. And that was it of the day after back. It was like dominoes. It just went uh, down. Right. So ha having been to Australia and uh, various other places, you didn't get to Penge because you wanted to go to Penge. Oh, Penge was going to be my birthday treat. I was going to, because I've got my 60th travel card. Uh, in That's... London, you get uh, an oyster card, a special oyster card oh, when you're over yeah. 60. Yeah. So you can use public transport for free. I don't think you're allowed the trains in rush hour, but there is no rush hour at the moment. Only it's creeping back. And um, I've got this pristine, unused, over 60s Oyster card. And I've got a bus outside my house that goes from Oxford Circus to Penge. I've never been to Penge. <laughs> and I thought, well, I'll go to Penge on the bus. But of course, as soon as... I got my card. The, the virus was just making it too dangerous. I'm still too scared to get on public transport. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. It's, and it's so sad because I'm a huge bus user. I mean, I'm sa I live in South London. We've got no tube. So it's always, it, it's always been buses for me. I'm a bit of a public transport bore, well, actually. I'm, I'm jealous of that because any time I've been in London, I've always travelled in underground and I want to travel in buses because you don't really see, well, obviously you don't see London because you're not you're underground. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But you see, buses, London buses are only for the locals. Nobody else can understand. It's like another language. It's like knowing, you know, Japanese. It's like speaking Japanese. It really is. London buses only makes sense to people who live on certain routes. Yeah, 
Yeah, yeah. So, you know, where, where, where should you be, Hugh, by the way? This is my home. No, I know you meant to be there, but if oh, you were there, should be. And if you I, should be to... I, I, I should be in Andalusia, in Seville. Yeah. And Seville is beautiful. I, I was there for the first time last year. I loved it. Absolutely. I've never been. Yeah. I've never been. Oh, I recommend a, a trip to Seville. And what would you be teaching? What would be the speciality be? Uh, which th it's still probably be a uh, watercolor, but I do. I, I I've kind of honed the whole thing now, where I do a lot of uh, introductory drawing and get people to draw with the left hand, get them to draw uh, from imagination. I, I mean, I various and I do things like painting with uh, instead of using a paintbrush, I use the feather, and I, I try to encourage them to free up and loosen up. Uh, and so I do all that and then we lead it into watercolour painting. The thing I find that, and I, I, I kind of read some of the stuff that you have in your blog and, I, and you touch on that quite a lot, both in your writing and, uh, and in painting, is that I think often what happens is people's frustration comes because they have in their mind and in their imagination what they want to create. The frustration comes as they don't have the technique to do it. And it's to try to get that over and say, look, you give yourself a chance. It takes time, you know? I also think that what people have in their heads is a finished product that they could hang on their wall yeah, or give yeah. somebody as a present right. or print off as a card. And they get very angry by failure. And failure is actually the only way you learn. Yeah. And getting over the, the rage. I do yoga as well. I do a lot of online yoga. And um, my balance is very, very, very bad. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they always say you've got to fall over to learn. <laughs> I'm still at the falling over stage. But with, with the, the drawings that I've been doing in lockdown, I've really been trying not to judge harshly. And just, but then because I put them out on Twitter and on Instagram, if they don't get any likes... <laughs> <laughs> I just think, oh, oh dear, that poor painting. But I'd be, you know, it's, it's, I've got a, a huge sort of wadge of stuff now, which I, I think I'm, I might try and do a um, vlog for charity when this is all over. And I'm going to stop doing them on the 1st of June because I think that the 1st of June seems to be a kind of, we are going to the next stage of coming out yeah. of lockdown. Yeah, yeah. I like, you know, you've got on your blog, you've got a painting that uh, is of the frontal areas of, of buildings. I don't know where you, I think you did it when you were at your art class, your painting class. Do you know the one I mean? Was it on, I don't really use my website very much. Was it on Twitter or Instagram or was it on? It, 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 now I don't use these things at all. I mean, uh, I, just, right. I, I just Googled your name and the, the blog came up. Oh, uh, it was it was quite it was quite old stuff actually. It was two thousand and seventeen, most of it. Right. Well, I'll just put you something. I'm going to split screen now, um, yeah. Hugh. I'm going to do something really clever. I'm just sort of looking oh. down for technology. Wow, I'm rubbish. Well, I know. It. Well, yes, I'm. I'm thinking that. But then, I what I did was I made a little file of um, of artworks that I've been working on but of course i've lost the file on my <laughs> desktop but i've got i've got one here let me just open this and see if any of these come up okay so what's this one okay right so i'll do split screen here share okay. screen let's see if this works this yeah. is a rhododendron this is in the oil pastel oh wow, to stay, is that on can you see it no i can't I'm, I'm not yet no oh no <laughs> oh <laughs> oh no, the host has disabled attendee screen sharing. So that's that's because you and I didn't set up this meeting. That's our host. All ah, right, okay. This, well, um, I, well, I, can't, <laughs> I can't override the host. <laughs> no, well, um, for anybody who's interested, they're all on my Twitter, which is just. Oh, well, I have to have a look at that because the other one that I really liked was you, you were at the, you went to, and you know, I had written it down. Um, you went to uh, Dulwich Gallery and you did a, a life painting there. Ah, well, Dulwich and Picture really Gallery. Like that. Really like yeah, that. Yeah, Dulwich Picture Gallery. I've been to a few courses there as well because it's very local to me. And uh, have you ever been to Dulwich? No, no. it's mad. <laughs> mad. 
it's like um it's a really posh village right it's like it's so posh it still has finger pointing signs <laughs> for, to roads you know so that, like say park and all that it's like something out of agatha christie but it's really near, near brixton and peckham yeah. and amberwell so it's actually surrounded by proper mob-handed south london and um, it's just this little sort of posh oasis and it's got this very pretty art gallery it's the oldest art gallery in the country uh so they say but you know how many of them say that yes yes and um it ha they we do there are some courses now and again and they're not stupidly expensive i've done introduction to oils i might have done that three times oh wow um and i've done some watercolor classes there and you know, and so most courses start quite basic and, you know, with drawing and things like that. And my drawing has improved. I know that because I think if you do something every day for 60 yeah. days, it, it does get better. However, my perspective, you know, Jeff, my partner, yes. <laughs> you see, Jeff sees in perspective. Yeah. I don't. Yeah. I, I really genuinely still don't really understand perspective. Well, I love that because I, I actually wrote it down and I said, do you remember the fun that we had to try to do perspective for mm -hmm. the Viso? And, and also the fact that I felt so disappointed that I tried to get Jeff to use colour on these beautiful line drawings and he just wouldn't do it. He did a couple. Um, when we went to, we had that day trip to Venice. Yeah. And he did some line drawings and he put a little bit of, a sandy coloured wash on the yes, I remember that. That's yeah, I think it was yeah. colour. Yeah. They they were that's as far as I mean I I'm garish. I mean, I'm yeah. vulgar. Vulgar with my use of colour. But uh, no, Jeff is still very much um black and white, you know, black ink on yeah. very big pieces of white paper. And uh, I mean you know it, it comes naturally to him and he's yeah. he's a very good draftsman that's yes, yes, yeah. yeah um so i i sort of take great pleasure in going in totally the other direction and <laughs> it's funny because i i said to, when i saw catherine because you were with catherine and yes. and i said that i'd enjoyed working with you and i just wondered how you got on with perspective in sicily and she, yeah. you just shook her head <laughs> yeah I don't, I don't really do it i don't see it and I, I, don't, I think that's a plus. I mean, I, I had a lovely quote from you that I was picking up on. It says, uh, uh, you have no precision and everything I do is scrappy and out of kilter. And I was just writing about that, that, you know, Picasso has spent all his life trying to be like that. And so do I. I find I'm too precise and I've got to try to loosen up all the time. And that the freedom that you find when you don't have that academic background, mm. that that's when you get true free expression, you know? Well, I quite like, um, I, my brother always says I come from the flat earth school of painting. Um, but I do, there's a, you know, I'm, I'm doing the Grace and Perry show. Uh, oh, on, yes. Are you? Oh, wow. Well. On well. Monday. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, um, there, oh, I, I, I can't really preempt that. But he, he asked me to choose a favourite artist. Yeah. Quite a lot of my favourite artists also ignore perspective there's quite a lot of stuff where perspective is skewed or doesn't really make sense or you know and a lot of mid-20th century stuff as well when you say you have a still life and yeah. you can see kind of all sides of the bottle it doesn't really make sense but it does yeah. we know yeah. What, yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah so that's what yeah um well, so like, did you get your pottery class? You were, you were going to join a pottery class. Oh, well, yes, I did. And do you know what? I have no talent for pottery whatsoever. I mean, like, absolutely. You know, like some people have green fingers yeah. and, and can garden. I believe there's such a thing as pottery hands. Oh, yeah. And um, I, because my mother, years, years ago, when I was a teenager, my mother... <laughs> My mother, God, I've been such a cow to my mum over the years. She, um, she's still with us. She's 91. And she's been oh. by herself. She's been remarkable. It's been, you know, it's awful. And um, when she was in her 50s, um, she took up pottery somewhere in Lytham, you know, in somebody's garage. I don't know. And she used to bring back all these bowls, you know, proper bowls, bowls yeah. like this. Yeah. And then she got onto teapots. She was doing teapots with spouts and handles. And we just dismissed them, we ignored them, and she's still got some. 
And after I tried, I had a, a five week course in um, Peckham underneath the arches. And literally, you know, it was on the wheel and you throw a bowl, you would think you were throwing a bowl. And I would hope to get something about that size, you know. <laughs> and what you actually came out with, and once it had been fired, was something, you know, that you could hold in the palm of your hand. It's like an ashtray size, if everyone still needed ashtrays. And I just found that so disappointing that the, the gap between what you thought you were doing that's, and what actually came out of the kiln. Yeah. But I have a lovely story, and, I, and, and Julie, I'll need to edit this out because they okay. couldn't possibly choose it. But I, I used to teach pottery when I was in a, an art teacher in schools. And the school I was in was a community school, so I taught adults as well as uh, people, children. And there was an adult group of ladies that came along, it was called the ladies group, and they did uh, home economics where they would do cooking. And they went to the uh, craft designing technology where they do woodwork to make bits of furniture and things like that. And they came to me for pottery. And they all wanted to get on the wheel. They were all desperate to get on the wheel. Yeah. I, do, I, I kept them away from it as much as I could initially. And then I did demos on the, the wheel and that was fine. And they messed and they, exactly the same. They produced uh, ashtrays. Yeah. But then I said to them, all right, I'm, I need to show you how to make handles. Did you actually make handles? No. When you make a, when you make a sausage shape. Of yes, it's a little filthy, yeah. And then you slam it onto the end of the table. Yeah, yeah. And then you soak your hands and you pull it out. Yes, yeah. And you imagine the conversations. Yeah, I know, I know. Because and, and it became what I called my willy class because yeah. that's all they wanted to do. Because I watched Pottery Throwdown. And right. even on pottery throwdown, you know, you can't, they cannot avoid the sort of, you know, the sniggering. And because it is a schlong, it is absolute schlong work. Um, but yeah, pottery is something that I, it's, on, it's not in the bottom of my list, but it's not yeah. at the top of my list. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, think, I think what I'd like to do next is I'd like to go somewhere where I can work on a very big canvas. Yeah. Uh, and try and approach one painting and actually finish a very big work because I've never done that. Yeah. I think the biggest I've ever gone is probably, a, you know, A3. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, well, that, I mean, that's the biggest I've done in here because it's the limits of the yeah. space that yeah. I've got. Um, but, and I actually, when I got the canvases, I thought, oh, gosh, this is going to be a challenge, but I haven't painted that big for such a time. I've loved it, loved every yeah. minute of it, yeah. Well, uh, when, I start, when I started doing these little art a day things in lockdown, I started just with postcard sized because yeah. I thought, well, you know, it's only going to be 20 minutes a day or whatever. And within a couple of weeks, I'd gone up a size, then up a size, and now, um, I mean, I have got, I've decided I've got to, um, I will stop doing these because I have to do something now that's going to earn me some money. So I've started writing uh, something that hopefully will become something publishable in, in some time so, in the future. Have you been doing that during the lockdown period? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I've got another book out, um, if there's any menopausal ladies watching, of which there probably are, <laughs> there tend to be a lot of us. I've just written a book called Older and Wider, uh, A Survivor's Guide to the Menopause. So, because I've got a podcast called Older and Wider, right. which I do with my friend Judith Holder, who I wrote Grumpy Old Women with. Yeah. And, um, but I, I got offered this book some time ago to write a, a sort of handy guide to the, a sort of, it is a comedy guide to the menopause. It's sort of taking the piss out of it. It's quite diary-ish as well. It's very, it's quite personal, but it's, it's not one of those kind of mealy mouthed, oh, let's tiptoe around the menopause kind of thing. And, you know, it's also dreadful and everything. It is trying to find the, you know, that there is a, there's light at the end of the tunnel always. Yes. And uh, some of it is very funny indeed. Even when the rage, the rage, you, I, I became almost incontinent with rage on occasions. Um, and I had to go on HRT because, I was in danger of killing people and ending up in a lady's prison. So, um, so that's coming out in July. And normally, you know, there'd be a lot of um, book festivals and I was going to go on tour in the autumn. And of course that's 
completely postponed. And it's just sometimes you think, oh God, will we ever get our old normal back? Yes, I, I don't think so, do you? I think it's going to be a new normal. I don't know how that. long? We can't live in an... You know, what about going on our holidays again? And Well, yes, and, and actually what I was going to ask you, I mean, what about the theatre? What, I mean, how are they going to manage that? How is the theatre going to recover? Well, theatre, I think all the things we're involved in that involve foreign travel, people being together, um, I, I think a lot of it will rely on a vaccine. I think that yes. you know, we, everyone, the vaccine is the, the magic wand, isn't it? That everybody really is kind of keeping their fingers firmly crossed because the vaccine will take us all back to normal. Mm -hmm. And if that doesn't happen, then there's going to have to be almost daily testing or something. There's got, going to have to be some piece of litmus paper that you can lick mm -hmm. to know whether you're safe to go out or not. Yeah, yeah. Which is, I mean, that's why it, the, the, we can't be the old normal because it, it, as long as that uh, persists, then we, we are in a completely new environment. Yeah. Although, you know, in th this nearly happened before with SARS and SARS just wore itself out. It just disappeared. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. There, is, there is, you know, some hope that this could just completely wear itself out. Yeah. Well, Lauren, actually, Lauren did ask me, I, me to ask you a question because she said that the, the comedy store's success on Zoom, do you think there will, there will be a decline in live comedy shows? I don't think that Zoom can ever replace a live, um, a, a li the live environment for comedy. I'm afraid I don't even like watching comedy uh, through a screen at all. I'm not even very good at watching comedy on television. I'm, I actually have no sense of humour. Um, but I take comedy really seriously. No, it's difficult for me to watch comedy. Um, I have really difficult tastes. I feel panicky watching other stand-ups. Often it's jealousy, so I, I tend not to watch it. The only, I think, in lockdown, the bit of comedy that I think has worked very well because it's been properly written, there's a, a lovely little clip that's available on YouTube now and it's Hugh Bonneville and all that lot from W1A, yeah. his take of the BBC. And it's just a filmed Zoom meeting with all the usual suspects talking about how they're going to come out of lockdown and how they're going to manage the television, you know, what's going to happen. And that's the only thing that I can actually recommend watching on, on TV in terms of, oh, and uh, it's a programme called Staff Let's Flats, and they did a funny one as well. So it's, uh, I don't know, I don't know. It, it makes, I don't, I can't even think about it too deeply because it makes me panic. The whole industry is so huge because it's not just theatre, it's not just stand-up, it's, it's all those massive gigs, you know, the big rock and roll bands, the pop groups, yeah. the, the Ariana Grandes, the, just, just the, the massive, huge, and the fact that it hasn't been, until very recently, it's, been, it's barely been part of the conversation on national television in the news, because it's all been football, football, football. And I'm really, really sorry. But in actual fact, twice as many people visit the theatre as watch the Premier League yes. annually. So, you know, and the billions of pounds that the, the entertainment industry creates for this country, it's just exhausting to even contemplate what the future is going to be. So. I think at the moment, all we can do to save our sanity is to live day by day and yes. you know, keep our fingers crossed and dream that one day we will have all those experiences again. I mean, as I said before, it wouldn't be a terrible thing if I didn't have those experiences, but for the younger generation, not to, not to know what it's like to stand on a stage in front of you know, a couple of thousand people all laughing at one thing together, I mean, it's just miserable. Yeah, yeah. I was wondering, actually, with the whole, I mean, because I've been thinking about it myself, but with the whole experience over the last uh, couple of months, with the whole lockdown and everything that's been going on, are you using that at all in your writing? Are you... It's really weird um, because 
I was fortunate enough to bring a novel out last uh, August, which hasn't come out in paperback yet. So is that the one that went to, is that Cornwall? It, it's Cornwall. The, that's the one called Inheritance. Yes. Yes. Inheritance is a novel. Um, and so I'm not due to write another novel yet, although I've got, um, I've got a, a, a well, a, it's difficult to talk about because I'm not sure whether I'm going to pull it off or not, but I have the opportunity to possibly write a young adult fiction. Okay. And for that, um, the only way I can do it is to travel back in time. Uh, and that is that is one way of getting out of dealing with the lockdown novel, because I think there will be a lot of lockdown novels. Mm. Um, and I'm not sure I'm in the right frame of mind to write one at the moment. And I'm certainly not not in the frame of mind to read one. I'm, I'm reading... I, I, I do a lot of Audible because since we last met, I developed a very boring thing called dry eye disease. Uh, which means I, my eyes get very tired and very dry and I have to write in a massive font and um, I have to use drops and all this kind of thing and it's quite tedious and so I, I do a lot of audible books rather than reading because I find yeah. the font in books just quite difficult for me and I don't like Kindles very much and anyway if I make the font as big as I need on a Kindle. I'm kind of just swiping all the time because, you know, I'm doing about 20 words to a page. Um, so, yeah, I mean, books, are, I think they're incredibly important at the moment, as is art, as is, you know, anything that takes you away from panic. Mm. Mm. I know, it's, it's, that, it's capturing that whole that idea, I was thinking, I've been thinking about it, that idea of isolation. Uh, that we all are, I mean, particularly here, where I'm, it's such a small village anyway, and we've got signs at both ends of the village saying that eventually, effectively telling people not to come here because there's no, the pub's not open, the, uh, the shop's only open for people that live in the village, there's no drink, there's no food for them, so people are being told not to come. But um, I, there is some, there's a feeling about that isolation um, that I feel that you, it, I want to find some way of expressing that. I think. I think that's what I'm saying. Well, I think. It, I think it can. I think it's sort of almost easier done in art mm. because I think that um, a whole book about feeling isolated is just a slightly grim prospect. Yeah. And I think that at the moment people also need quite a lot of escapism. Mm. So. Um, uh, I'm actually, uh, one of the things I've got on Audible at the moment is I Capture the Castle, which is written by Dodie Smith and is one of those coming of age <coughs> books by a woman called Dodie Smith, who then went on to write 101 Dalmatians. Oh, yeah. Yeah, two big hitters. Yeah. And uh, that is pure escapism because it's, it's a, a 1930s story of a 17-year-old girl <coughs> That had gone down the wrong throat now. It's finding love for the first time. Anyway, um, are you doing any online teaching? Uh, well, I haven't started yet. I'm going to do some, yes. I'm, I'm a little bit, to be honest, I'm a little bit nervous about it because I think a lot of it will uh, mean demonstration. And not to have the interaction is, is, is not, you know, direct. It's just what you were saying about live, live comedy. Is I need that interaction with individuals so that um, I can see where they're at, what, what their feelings are about what they're doing. You know, I think you, you understand that, is that in order to, with, to teach without patronising people, but to try to bring f forward their strengths while get, making them aware of the areas that they've got to work on, it's, it's a difficult thing to do at a distance. But uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, you can only sense the joke is working when you feel the atmosphere in the room. You know, yes. it's yeah. well, at first you hear the laughter, and B, you feel a, a vibe, which is a sort of everyone's leaning forward, everyone's listening, everyone's smiling. Yeah. And without that, I mean, even if you could see that, if there was some kind of Zoom stand up, and I think some young people are doing that. Yeah. It's, I, I find sound quality, all those things really kind of quite annoying yeah, uh, yeah if i can't get it right and i live in a very echoey house so even doing a podcast 
um, when I listen back to it, I think, oh, I wish we were in studio because I can control the sound better. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's very difficult. And I think that, I think the first two months of this, it, because it was so dramatic, it was kind of easier to obey and just go, right, we are, we just have to do this. But now we're being encouraged to relax it a bit. I don't know what we're coming out into. And I think that's much more frightening than the early stages of the stay home, stay safe. Yeah. Because yeah. you had no option then. And, and that was, and it, you know, we had no lot, we didn't really have any idea how long it was going to go on for. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's interesting because I mean there was there was something I noted in uh, some of the things I was reading in your blog and and, and about yourself and and I mean, it was it, and it resonated with me as well is that I suffer from lack of confidence at times with my own work and uh, I find that if I'm if I'm not painting I'll I'll I'll, I'll do everything else I'll procrastinate all over the place rather than go and paint because sometimes I just don't have. I don't have a confidence there a, a lot of the time. And I noticed you, you said that as well, is that you need to actually be continually doing it. Otherwise, you get hesitant about going back to them because you, yeah. you, you lose yeah. your Yeah, I, I, you know, I, um, well, as with most people, you know, I think a lot of people, particularly in the entertainment industry, are an odd mix of slightly overly confident and then sniveling neu neurotically self-loathing. Yeah. So you kind of flip from one thing to the other. And um, yeah, I, I, I find the idea of failure always appalling. Uh, you know, always. We, you know, whatever I'm doing, I, you know, the embarrassment of failure and failing publicly is horrific. But it happens, doesn't it? You know. Yeah. It does. That's right, and it's. It, I, 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 I thankfully had um, the success of having a piece in the summer exhibition last year. Oh, did you? Did yeah. you? What was it? It was. It was. It was one of my. Was that event? I'll have seen it. It was. Oh, it was high up. It was. But it sold on the first day. You know, they have that celebrity. I was there, love. Yeah. Well, it was sold that night. Yeah. That well, was I was. I was there for a special, special preview. <laughs> which was before the celebrity one. The Macmillan Trust have an afternoon and an, an early evening, yeah. a, a couple of days before when it's just been hung, literally. And I was, I went to that one, and um, I did have a good look. And oh, it was a lovely day. It was a beautiful day, like today. And we went there, and then we walked out, and it wasn't too late. And we went to the Woolsey oh, yeah. for supper, mm -hmm. and they do this really quite cheap steak deal and we you know, we weren't in the main restaurant we were just in the sort of bit on the side and i think it was like it was like 15 quid each or something and it was so beautifully beautifully served and presented and they made us feel you know like we had the lobster it was just one of those really wonderful days and uh, oh, having something what was it what was the painting it was it was a drawing actually. It's, a, it's drawings that I had uh, prepared. My, I'm I'm very close friends with Barbara Ray, who's a, a, a Royal Academician, and yeah. uh, and Barbara had seen some of the, the the work I was doing and the plans I had for it, and she said you must submit submit stuff into the Royal Academy, and I put two in, and that one was uh, was successful in getting hung, and uh, and then it was a is a, a charcoal drawing that I'd done all, all, uh, in the place, and it was a drawing of mountains. And, and it's, as I say, I was surprised it sold that night. Um, I, oh, I was very pleased that. brilliant. Well, it's a real kick in the pants as far as getting your work get, and giving me confidence, and, and yeah. I have definitely done that, yeah. yeah. Well, we all need that. We all need affirmation. We all need, well, for me, I've always been an applause junkie. What I always hated about writing books was the fact that at the end of the day, when you finished your couple of thousand words, nobody went, oh, well done, well done, you know. Um, and I think that's why I'm, so, I'm quite social media needy, because that you get your likes and all that sort of thing. And it does give you, it's been, you know, people blow hot and cold on social media. But for me, Twitter has been a very kind experience and a very warm, very supportive um, platform. And I'm, I'm you know, 
I really like it yeah. um, because I think there is a tribe of middle-aged women who kind of get each other and as long as the wrong people don't don't uh, stray into your Twitter s stratosphere yeah. then you can have a nice time it's just you know it can get nasty if the wrong people tap into what you said but you know on the whole it's been it's been really good and I think in lockdown it's for some people because are you with anybody in lockdown? Are you with? No, I'm just at my own. Are you? Yeah. Have you got any doggies? No, no, no. I've got my paintings. They talk to me. <laughs> Would no, you like, I, I, you I, like I, a doggy? I, I, I used to have dogs, but because of because of working with flavors, because I'm normally in a away. year, I'm away, so it's, it wouldn't be fair. Um, I, but I always had dogs as a child, and as a as I grew up, I always had dogs, yeah. Um, yeah. But, no, I, I think that, um, I mean, my mother's done all this lockdown by herself, and she's 91, and but she has been allowed a cleaner once a week who, who brings the food. Oh, and, that's good, yeah. I know, so, but she's been an absolute lifeline. I mean, she yeah. lives one miles 250 miles away. It's been, you yeah. know, it's terrific. Um, I think that we all, you know, lots of us need something to help us I'm, I'm i have to admit that i'm very lucky to have jeff we we kind of we get on pretty well yeah we've got a lot in common and we find things that we can watch together on television and yeah it's it, it, I, I think that being in a couple that um have, have been together for a very long time and being 60 and not being ill is sort of the ideal and, and, you know, not having any children, who I don't have to homeschool anybody or do yeah. anything really tricky like that. But um, I'm glad you've got your paintings keeping company. Well, I've got that, but no, as also, I mean, I'm missing the flavours thing. And I mean, I, I think you would have enjoyed the social side of, uh, of flavours. I mean, we had a lot of fun in Treviso. I mean, I yeah. can remember great laughs there uh, when we were working together. And it's... Yeah. It, I, I, and I, I, I know that I, there's a, one of the fishermen here, he used to run a regular trips over to Skye in his boat and he'd do these uh, pleasure tours. But his daughter is, uh, she, I remember her saying to me, you know, it's a lovely place to live, but you have to get away from it every now and again, because you do. It's, yeah. uh, and of course, with lockdown, it's tough. Yeah, I mean, I, as I say, you know, I think about that Flavours holiday, uh, the Moroccan one, because it was so extraordinary. And that thing, I remember, uh, you know, if I need to sleep at night, because we arrived very late in Morocco, uh, and the curtains in the bedroom were closed, so no idea what the view was going to be in the morning. And then that thing of waking up and pulling these curtains, and they must have been 20 foot high, these curtains, and you were just there with the Atlas Mountains, with snow in the background. So you had snow on top of mountains in the background, and, that, and yet you had rose gardens in the foreground, and lavender, and a pool. And it just, it was the, one of the most beautiful places I have ever been, yeah, ever, in my life. Yeah, yeah, yeah me too. And, I, and the, far, the, the gardener took me around the garden, and he had no English. He, 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 I think he spoke yeah. French. But he took me around the garden, and it's amazing when you don't have the language, and I have no French, and uh, but you can't actually communicate. And we, and you know, I was picking up the soil and saying what good soil it was, and he knew exactly what I was doing. And then he took me to his house, and he showed me around his house, and they've got beautiful tiles all around the house, yeah, but... beautifully decorated tiles. And then next to the house, he just opened a door. And it took me. It took me into a barn where he had. He had a cow, and I think there was two goats, and I can't remember what else was there. Hens r running about. I thought this is like what they used to have in Scotland with the old black houses, where yeah. people actually lived with their animals actually in the house. And yet so, next door was this sort of superstar yeah. mansion yeah. thing exactly. going on. That's yeah, it was, it was yeah. a quite a place. I mean. Uh, there are places that you know, I've still got to tick off my list. I would still like to go to Stockholm. I haven't ever been to Valencia. There are places in Italy I haven't been. Um, you no, know, no, there's, there's no, a, thoughts. A, no thoughts of going to Kuala Lumpur then? No, that's, um, I did, I had to go back because that's where I was born. 
yeah. I'm not, I don't have that yen to do. You're not, you're not, no. No, no, apart from Japan. I've had, a, I've always had a big thing to do Japan. Um, and I have a feeling that that's not going to happen. I'm going to have to do that virtually now. I'm going to just have to, fortunately over the past few, few years, every bloody other celebrity and its dog has been to Japan. So I can watch all the programs and just be quite jealous. Anyway, listen, I'll love you and leave you. And I'm going to try and do some writing now because uh, I'm going to have to make some kind of a living. Thank <laughs> <laughs> you so much. It's been lovely. Bye. Hey, take care all. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 You nice bye. to see bye. you. Take care. Bye. I'm off. <laughs>